Hi, I'm here today with Walter Bird, editor of the Worcester Magazine. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. Well, this is great. We want to talk a little bit today about where media is going, and it's, we're it's changing <laughs> so much. There's still, and I'm a freelance writer, so I have a stake in this uh, as well as an <laughs> avid reader uh, of newspapers and, and weekly newspapers. Why aren't you writing for us? Well, that, well that's a good question. We'll have to solve that. Because of money. <laughs> <laughs> but the, uh, uh, there's still a place for newspapers, yes. both dailies and weeklies, but news is, is being communicated in a lot of different places now. And you and Worcester Magazine have sort of led the way in some ways about in some respects in terms of doing that. Worcester Magazine, of course, people may be familiar with the, it's a weekly, sure. serves all the greater Worcester Central area, Mass, yep. Central Mass yep, area. Worcester County, yeah. And uh, that's right, you're, 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 you're distributed throughout, throughout Worcester County. Throughout yeah. Worcester County. Yep. And, but you're also doing things on radio and cable television. I don't sure. know if you're podcasting as well, but tell us a little bit. For instance, what are you doing with radio? I know oh, absolutely. Um, well, first of all, Matt, thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, so I appreciate it. And um, don't venture in the truth very much. Yeah. It's a great town. It is. It's a great it town. Is. You have to come uh, here more. It's maybe heresy to say that from Worcester. You know, <laughs> but, uh, um, you no, know, truly, uh, Worcester Magazine um, has, has come a long way, you know. Uh, it is a print, uh, so base, base operations, it's a print paper that comes out every Thursday. And um, I've been doing that now for over 40 years, which the magazine has. But uh, you said it, the times they are changing, and uh, the media definitely are changing. And so one thing that I've tried to do as editor is, is branch us up, really mostly from marketing standpoint. To, we don't have a marketing budget, so how can we expand our footprint uh, in our brand? Um, in, in the constraints that we have, the financial constraints we have. And one of the ways I saw of doing that is taking advantage of what your community has to offer, local uh, options like TV, radio, whatnot. Um, and so, and I can say this, the, the first real uh, way that we've morphed and, and changed is online, obviously. Mm -hmm. So online it came and kind of changed the entire game. So Worcester Magazine is now online every day. Uh, we, we post fresh content every day. So it's not just a weekly paper. You go online, in fact, if you pick up the weekly paper on Thursday, you're gonna get almost entirely fresh content than what you got online. Um, most of the stuff that we put online doesn't go in a weekly paper. It's just daily stuff that we put up there to engage our audience. Um, yeah, I subscribe to that, and I do get the, the news yep. from you every day. And that's also, because I remember asking you about, about this, I don't know, four or five months ago, I was missing the calendar section. And the calendar changed. The calendar yeah. changed. It's now online. We have an online calendar, correct. So uh, we, we do still have one in print, Matt. It's not, you know, uh, it's eight or ten items, uh, right. eight or ten events. Um, it's not the way it was. It was four or five pages before. Yes. Um, and we just thought that we, we thought that we could do other more things uh, with those pages. Um, we've added um, an adoption option. We partnered up with Worcester Animal Rescue League to do that. Uh, an artist spotlight. So, so we've tried to use those print pages for, to, to reach you know, a more diverse audience. Um, believe me, I heard it about the calendar. People want to see the calendar. But it is online. You go to WorcesterMag.com. It's a new calendar, by the way. It's, I think it's much better than the older mm -hmm. one was online. Uh, but I really want us to become multimedia. I, I, and I meant multimedia. So um, print and online is great. And online digital really is uh, the future. And uh, we had the opportunity. Uh, 2017, uh, Hank Stoltz. Mm -hmm. If you don't know Hank Stoltz, uh, then you don't know radio. Good friend, right. Yes. Uh, great guy and knows, has forgotten more about radio than I'll ever know. Uh, and he was partnering up with Ernie Floyd from Pride Productions and uh, a little outfit called Unity Radio. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a small, small, I'm not even sure if it's a 50 watt station signal up on uh, Askabumskit Hill, uh, I think, where another station broadcasts out of. And um, if you listen to 102.9 in Worcester, you can hear us. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it crackles in and out. Um, they asked us to come on board, <coughs> excuse me, uh, to, to provide that streaming co uh, component mm -hmm. so that people could go on to a website and actually stream it uh, and, and not just have to be in their car or listen to an old transistor radio. If anybody watching, I know that they all know what a transistor radio is. I still have one. We, yeah, <laughs> I had one. I grew up, you know, I grew up with my dad had one. And uh, so they got to bring those back. And um, so... I, I thought it was a good opportunity for us to expand our brand, uh, get ourselves out there more, and again, enhance that multimedia platform. I was already doing 
uh, and I believe the editor before me had been doing um, a, a local cable TV show in mm -hmm. Worcester. Uh, if I can give a shameless plug, Rosen's sure. around table. It's the city council, Gary mm -hmm. Rosen. Um, and um, scintillating TV. <laughs> we have fun. We have fun doing sure. it. Sure. And uh, we talk about the issues of the day. And that's uh, something we, we, we shoot uh, every week. Or every other week, I should say, when we shoot two shows. And um, so we were doing TV. We're doing online, doing print. And radio just seemed to fit. I love radio. Um, it's another one of those. There's similarities between radio and, and print because everybody has you know, predicted their demise. Sure. You know, they're yep. they're going to die. And, um, you know, print still keeps chugging along and so does the radio. Um, but the key for radio is also that streaming component. So people can be on their phone, be on their iPad, be on their, their computer. So that's what we do. And um, currently the current format really is, it's called Radio Worcester. Um, and it has Talk of the Commonwealth with, with Hank Stoltz, 6 to 10, uh, Monday through Friday. Uh, the Economy Rosen Show. Uh, with mm -hmm. Gary Rosen and uh, former counsel Tony Economo, uh, 10 to 11, uh, 12. And then I was doing every day, Monday through Thursday, and we had uh, two reporters that were doing the Friday show. Uh, we did that for a year, and it was just becoming a lot. So what we're doing now is um, I do a Thursday show, Worcester Magazine Radio Hour, uh, noon to one, and uh, the regular guest typically is the city manager of Worcester. He comes mm -hmm. on. We just uh, did that today. And then on Fridays, um, our culture editor, Josh Lightford, and reporter, Bill Shaner, they do something completely different. Off the rails, kind of um, entertainment, fun, sure. thing like that. Um, so, yeah, you know, and so that's where we are. And you think about that, where Worcester Magazine started, and when, you know, newspapers were newspapers. Right. And, and, and we were guys that, that, that carried around a notepad and a pen. Um, sometimes we were a fedora. You know, and, um, you know, back in the old, old days, you smoked in the newsroom and you had a whiskey in your draw. Some people might still have that. Um, but uh, I quit smoking, so I don't do that. But uh, now we're carrying around, you know, phones and, and, and laptops and, uh, and really branching out. So it, it's really been, um, I think, uh, an evolution that continues. Uh, and and I'm really, I really am proud of the fact that with the magazine, I don't think there, well, there isn't another local media outlet here that does all those forms of media. You have it online. Um, and yet the daily paper does, um, I think they have some podcasts and whatnot, mm -hmm. but um, to do TV, radio, print online, um, I think is ambitious and I think it serves a lot of different people. Well, that's great. And that is, I think, the future for your radio show. Can people pick that up by outside of you know, Worcester? So throughout Absolutely. And how do they do that? They can pick it up in Russia. What, and how do they I do don't know that? why I mentioned Russia, given everything that's <laughs> going know. on now. That's right. I know nobody in Russia. <laughs> that's right. You get in a lot of trouble. That's uh, right. Uh, so Worcestermag.com. All you have to okay. do is go to Worcestermag.com, and in the upper right corner, uh, the Radio Worcester logo uh, button. You just click on that, and, um, and you're good to go. All um, right. Great. Absolutely. Great. Well, we'll have to have you come back at some point and talk some more about about some of the issues that you encounter, uh, not just within media, but in the world in general. And, uh, uh, but I appreciate you coming by. I do think people are struggling it. to figure out how to find news. Yeah. And one of the concerns, I, I guess it's a concern that I have, sometimes it gets to be so diffuse that you have to know where to find it. And that's the purpose of, of having you in, was to let people know a little bit more about how to find local news and regional news. Uh, yeah, I appreciate that. Um, right. You know, you can still find it in Worcester Magazine every Thursday. I tell you that. It, uh, you know, we're in locations all around uh, Worcester County. We're here in Shrewsbury, obviously. Um, and, uh, and, yeah, that's online, definitely. I think that that's still a piece um, that, that you want people. And, by the way, social media is a huge component for what we do. Yes, that's Face, true. Too. Facebook is a real big driver, uh, particularly for newspapers and particularly for us. We find, I find, our data shows us that a lot of our traffic that goes to our website, it's starting at social media. Yeah, social media. Well, so. again, there are ways that people can find you. That's and right. Find out the, what the news is. And I appreciate you coming by. Thank you so much. I, it's been a pleasure. I appreciate it, man. Well, thank you. And we'll be back soon. Hi, I'm here today with Tom McCall, president of MyFM 101.3 radio station, serving all of the Metro West, as well as WMRC. Having worked with you and WMRC yes. and your dad forever, I have to mention WMRC, which is very Milford area oriented. Yeah. But my FM 101.3 is relatively new, a year or two? Yeah, two years, two, two years, years in January, right. yeah. And serving all of Metro West. And I wanted to have you in. Tell us a little bit about 
what you do yep. and how media has changed maybe, although that could take an hour with the two of us in yeah. time. <laughs> and, but specifically, what kind of programming, what, what, yeah. what got, made you get into the FM side and expand your services? Well, I, you know, I had been in the industry with my dad right out of college back in 1990 uh, with WMRC, uh, AM station in Milford, which had been on the air since 1956, uh, very successful. Uh, local station tied to the local communities uh, and about three years ago the FCC changed a couple of the rules which would allow me to go out and look for an FM frequency that would fit in mm -hmm. this market without interfering with other stations that were already uh, licensed here uh, and after a lot of legwork and a mm -hmm. lot of phone calls and a lot of heartache I, I found a station in upstate New York actually uh, that had the frequency of 101.3 on the FM dial and uh, I could squeeze that in between Boston, Worcester, and Providence, kind of where our footprint already was, but expanding it. Um, and so we purchased it, and we moved it down to Milford. And it, it's, I'd, I'd like to say it's basically the same station. It's local. It's tied to the community. It's, it's what's going on, and we call it that sweet spot between Boston, Worcester, and Providence, that there aren't any other radio stations. Right. Um, so we, I don't say we monopolize it, but when it comes to news and weather and sports and traffic it's it's that market you know i listen to the other stations and you hear traffic up on the north shore well that doesn't affect me That's you know right. I, I hear traffic down on the cape well that doesn't affect me so we try to customize our our programming really for that market between worcester boston and providence that's great, because there is a need, and, and, and we've talked about it in the past. Yeah. There's, no, uh, there's no news, local news, that, that satisfies the needs of people in the Metro West in particular, yeah. and you've started to fill a niche. So your programming look is like what? Well, you know, our, our mornings are, are mostly news, weather, sports, traffic, almost like mm -hmm. a WBZ. It's, it's everything you need to start the day, some music, contests, and things like that. Uh, throughout the day, it's classic hits with local content mixed in. Mm -hmm. uh, it isn't just a jukebox. It's not just an iPod. Right. It, it's, it's a great blend of music, 60s, 70s, and 80s, but it still has updated traffic and updated weather and if there were a fire going on so it's 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 a great blend of music that you'd love to listen to at work but also still be tied to the local community what what events might be coming up that night that you might want to attend whether it's high school basketball games or fundraisers and things like that so um we, we really try to position ourselves you're not going to get this anywhere else that's right that's uh right. we do carry the red sox we carry the bruins we carry the patriots uh bc football and basketball some Paw Sox, when it doesn't conflict with the Red Sox, which will, will hopefully be carrying the Woo Sox or whatever they choose to <laughs> you know, call themselves. But uh, it really is serving that market, like you say, Matt, that it isn't Boston. And right. it's not exclusively Worcester. And it's not, it's not Providence. It's that market in between that I think is underserved. It, it definitely is. Until you came along, definitely was empty. An yeah. empty niche, really. And the FM signal, it, it gives us a much stronger signal. And I think in a lot of cases, uh, it's more perception. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, oh, you're that local AM station, meaning your grandparents, your great grandparents listen to it. Uh, so I think for a lot of people, just even the FM name mm -hmm. carries more weight um, than, than maybe the AM station used right. to. But, you know, when you talk about the media landscape and how it's changed, um, it, it isn't really radio anymore, it's not TV anymore. It's content, right. and how do you push it out to people? Some people don't own a radio. They don't own a radio yeah. in their house like Which we boggles, grew up Yeah, with. it boggles my mind. You know, I'm still a radio uh, listener. Yeah. You know, they, they, they get their, their news and information and entertainment on their phone yeah. or on their tablet or on their laptop. Well, we have a phone app. We have, you know, you can listen to the station on your on your laptop or. Your well, phone. you you have a, a website too. You you put news on your website. News is on the way. It's content, and yeah. how do you push it out to people? Whether it be uh, with an email blast into somebody's inbox, mm -hmm. whether it's on their phone, uh, whether it's a text. People, we have a text line, so people can sign up to get weather alerts on their on their phone with a text. It's. Uh, it's not radio like it used no, to be. No, it really isn't. But honestly, Matt, it's the same content that great local radio stations used to have, just on all platforms now. Right. Yeah. So if somebody goes to your website, you have they you can have link, news. They can you link have... to everything. Yep. Okay. Yep. We have our news on there, weather links, lottery numbers, 
uh, cancel school cancellations and things like that. I mean, that used to be the real wheelhouse for local radio. Oh stations, yes, it was. Right? Yes, you had to get up early and put on the local station. That's right. That's right. Uh, you know, you could put on WBZ, but you had to hear everything from Abington to Yarmouth that's right. to, to hear yours. Um, in in the Metro West years ago. WKOX, you'd listen to you Roland Boucher for the weather, and then you'd get your no school announcements. <laughs> yeah. Dave Scott and a couple of other people. And then yeah. if you were in Milford, you'd listen to WMRC for that. And it is, it's, diff it's different now. Yeah. It's and I think, it, I think it's critical now with the different platforms that we have because, you know, what used to be the 24 hour news cycle is now 24 seconds. Uh, and people expect that. Yes. Um, yeah. Not everybody needs a 10 minute news story or a 10 paragraph news story. Right. Give me 10 seconds. Give me the gist of what's happening, and then if I'm interested, I'll find the rest of that information someplace else. So it's kind of that, that USA Today approach of that left-hand column, mm -hmm. you know, the 10 yes. headlines right. in the money and the 10 headlines in sports and the 10 headlines in lifestyle, and, and I'm good to go. And I it, think that's where, where things are going. It's just give me the gist. That's right. Everything's so much faster, which isn't yeah. always better, but it's fast. It's just the way it is now. And your website, if, if, if they want news, stories it, it's sort of set up that way it's the fast the headline yeah. with a little with a picture and a little couple of paragraphs you got it it really it really is and and part of that is as we talked about running a local station is expensive uh it, it's you know we've got seven full-time employees maybe another 10 part-timers whether they're doing sports broadcasting and things like that you know we don't have two dozen stringers out there right. writing stories for us um, it, it's, it's, give me the gist of it, of, uh, you know, I mean, we now serve about 750,000 people in, you know, 20, 25 communities. Right. Uh, I'd rather have 20 kind of two paragraph stories than three right. extensive, you know. Uh, that's for somebody else. That's a different kind of somebody media. Else. And it's you can a, find that if you're looking correct. for that. Correct. Yep. I'll, I, I want to give you what you need to, to get through the day. Right. And then if we hit on something that you absolutely need to know more about, Mr. Google. That's it. That's right. That's right. So how do people find find you and, well, your, and your website? It, it's 101.3 on the dial. We still say on the dial. Sure. Um, uh, website's myfm1013.com. Uh, we have a, a special advertising website, which is myfmmedia.com, if somebody were interested more in that. And, um, you know, our, our phone app is myfm1013 live. It, it, it's what people expect. Sure. It's really what people expect. It's it's multi-platform, and uh, you'd better be there. Yeah, and you are. So thank you very much for coming. I appreciate you. that. Known you and your dad for a long time. You do a great job with both radio stations and thank and you so your website. Much. And pre wanted to have you uh, come and talk about it. I so appreciate it. Thanks, thank man. you. And we'll be right back. Hi, I'm here with Jen Roy from Jen Roy PR Agency. Thank you very much for coming. We're not going to talk about public relations today, though. We want to talk a little bit about Jen's struggle with OCD. Yep. And you're willing, which is I think is marvelous, to talk about it, to help other people who are struggling with sort of the same types of issues. Sure, sure. So tell me a little bit about when did you become aware that you were really affected? I know you're... You, you've struggled with this for a while. Well, I've got to say, um, you know, uh, I just started talking about it um, about a year ago, maybe two years ago now. And when I say talking about it, um, if I have an opportunity to speak uh, somewhere, like for example on this show, I will take it. Uh, but I, I mainly talk on my private social media, which isn't a public social media. For me, it's a big deal talking about it. Um, but I'm starting off you know, sl slow sure. with, with family and friends. And if anyone else wants to hear, I'm happy to talk with them. And I started talking about it because I had the blessing of my family. Uh, that was really important to me in talking about my issues because it's a family problem. Um, it's something that they've had to deal with too, as they love me and I suffered a lot with OCD. And it's, it's hard to talk about for anybody, sure. uh, especially with the stigma that's out there. So I, I, would, I guess to make a long story short, um, I really start, started having OCD, and that's obsessive compulsive disorder, at 28 years old. There was a moment, now there's, what people don't understand is very misunderstood OCD. People think it's a mental disorder that makes you really neat and picky mm -hmm. about things. And the fear, the trouble in that is that not only is it 
really inaccurate. Uh, if you have it out, if you, you're out there and you don't know what's wrong with you and you hear that that's what OCD is, uh, that's, you know, probably, I, I think maybe, I don't know what the percent is of people that have OCD that's about being neat, but even those people who might have that don't really have it because they would be paralyzed in fear if something wasn't, was out of order. It's not just, oh, I'm frustrated because my house isn't neat. Mm -hmm. You would be paralyzed with fear if it, if it wasn't in place and you would be uh, very anxious, uh, maybe even have meltdowns about it. Mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, so uh, there's a lot of different themes for OCD and, and um, one of those themes is something that I developed, I didn't even know it existed, but I had a fear, I had developed a fear of food contamination. Mm -hmm. And uh, one day, I was 28 years old and I ordered food from Nancy Chang, which I love their food, it's delicious. And uh, I, I was going through a stressful time in my life. I will definitely say that work was stressful. There were a lot of, I had just moved home from New York City. Uh, I lived there for a while. So I was like mid uh, quarter life crisis at that mm -hmm. point, sure. trying to figure out what to do with my life and blah, 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 blah. And uh, I was heating up some Nancy Chang and it was noodles. And uh, a thought popped into my head and this is what I learned is an intrusive thought. So a thought popped into my head, what if these noodles were prepared next to raw chicken? And I said, oh my gosh, what if that's true? Then, then these were exposed to raw chicken. But why would I think that? What, mm. You know, it's a reputable restaurant. And why would I even think that? Mm -hmm. So it's an intrusive thought. It comes in out of nowhere. Now you didn't have any issues before? No, no. I, that you were I, aware of anyway? Yeah, no, no, uh, no, no severe OCD before that. I mean, I had anxiety, some anxiety and depression. Um, so this was probably a lot of that not being dealt with, mm -hmm. but that's not for me to say, you know, um, people can determine that with their own experiences. But when I had that thought about the food, uh, I ate half my dinner that night and I said, if this is a thing, if this becomes a thing, I'm in trouble. But I don't think it will because I'd never thought like this before, but man, was it scary enough for me mm. to only eat half my dinner. I didn't know that I would eventually go down to 90 pounds, uh, you know, in my 30s. Uh, I had to fight to not get a feeding tube because I didn't want a feeding tube and I just, I wasn't eating. I was so scared to eat and it, I was scared that something would make me sick. Mm -hmm. um, I was very afraid, not to be too graphic, but I was very afraid of throwing up. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people who have a fear of throwing up and I forget the technical word for it, <laughs> but you get the drift. Sure. Um, it scared me so much that I even was afraid at one point of drinking water. Wow. Which kills you. Sure. So, um, but I, I always, I said, if I don't drink the water, I will die. So I, uh, I can't do that, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so that was how bad it got. I was 90 pounds. I was seeing, I mean, I worked my butt off to get better. I was seeing a nutritionist. I was uh, going to my primary care doctor every Friday, way, getting a, a weigh in. Mm -hmm. I was seeing uh, an, ex uh, uh, an OCD therapist. Uh, for exposure therapy, because when you have OCD, what helps it is if you constantly face your fears, which is very hard to mm. do and very hard to ask someone to do, but that literally is some of the best treatment is exposure response prevention therapy okay. and different things. Um, and uh, eventually I got on the right medication for it. Um, I'm fine to say I take Prozac and that helped me tremendously. I tried to fight uh, not going on that because of the stigma for about 15 years. Wow. I tried not going on that and I regret that, but I also tried everything in my power to do this naturally. I sure. tried yoga, I tried, uh, you know, working out, 
spiritual practices and everything. And, and I am, a, as you know, I'm a very spiritual person. Yes, I rely on my faith and that helped me tremendously. Um, but I certainly got worse when I didn't take the medication sooner. So I just try to talk to, I, I have a bit of, a, I think of a reputation in this community uh, where people know me because for 10 years, I was on Channel 3 News, That's right. and I had the opportunity through that platform to meet a lot of people, interview a lot of people, get to know more people than you normally would. Um, so I feel that I have the friendships and the trust with people that they know me, and I want them to know that I suffer from this, I have suffered from this, and I don't want them to feel alone, and I want them to uh, I want to educate the public about what OCD really is because the the uh, average time people it takes people to get treated is about 10, 10 to 12 years. Mm. That's it's a really long time. one of those issues to me that has a, a physical type of component. Sure. It's not it's not just this person's no, a little off the wall. There's a there's a yeah. there's a physical issue that creates this neurological. It is, it's, it's an issue with the brain. It's a disorder, it's uh, the CDC. Um, and I think that's important to realize, for people to realize, because that's where the stigma comes from. You know what, you're uh, right, yeah. It, it, but it's something you didn't do to yourself. It's something that no. you didn't create. Unfortunately, you know, instead of some sort of uh, diabetes or something, you have a physical issue an imbalance in it your is. brain. It is a physical issue. For, for me, you know, not all mental disorders are physical, um, but you know, when I tried for 15 years to take care of anxiety and depression, and you know, I, I, I was, um, they call it, they would say high functioning. You know, I've had great jobs. I've been able to do some great things and participate in great things. It, it never held me back till the last couple of years when it just, it just got uh, unmanageable. So, because we've got to wrap up, we could talk about this for, for an hour because you're helping so many people, I think, just by opening up and so. sharing your experience and letting people, what should they do? If somebody is dealing with this themselves, which sure. is without, where should they go? Um, first of all, I just want you to know, I, I, I understand the suffering and um, my heart goes out to you because it can be brutal on you and your loved ones. Um, there actually, uh, there's OCD Massachusetts and McLean Hospital it has an OCD Institute there. And the people associated with that, the doctors are wonderful. There are some doctors in Worcester that are associated with the McLean OCD Institute. Oh, great. And there's free talks at UMass um, Hospital, um, the Lake Ave campus once a month for okay. families and for, for people. And I think that's a, a big component. As you said, it affects the whole family. It does. Anyway. Well, thank you. I guess our, our message is if you are dealing with this, go get help right Please away. Please get Don't help hesitate. and you're not alone uh, and you can get better from a mental illness. That's, and you are certainly somebody who, who demonstrates Who loves that. going out to restaurants and doing things uh, that I, I didn't think I'd ever be able to do again. You can get better and you should not be ashamed of any of it. That's great. Thank you very much for coming and sharing that. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Oh, you're, you're very welcome. This is an important message, and we'll be back. Hoping that today we treat everybody we meet with kindness, respect, and tolerance. Thanks for joining us. Until next time.